Now, our visual system is exquisitely tuned to motion, not just our self-generated motion, but the motion of things around us. And one of the things that it does is something called smooth pursuit. Smooth pursuit is our ability to track individual objects moving, as the name suggests, smoothly through space in various trajectories. You can actually train or improve your vision by looking at smooth pursuit stimuli. And that sounds really boring. You can actually take a few minutes each day, or maybe if you don't do it each day, you could do every third day or so, and actually just visually track a ball. Sometimes it's moving in in kind of an infinity symbol. Sometimes it's more of a sawtooth. Sometimes it's changing speed. Sometimes the, uh, the cue that you're following, the little target is um, dilating and contracting. This is going to keep the muscles, I want to be clear, this is going to keep the extraocular muscles conditioned and strong and allow you to have a healthy, smooth pursuit system. Remember, the brain follows the eye. It follows the movements of the eye. It has to deal with that. And the neural circuits within the brain have to cope with changes in smooth pursuit. So if you're doing a lot of reading up close, you're not viewing horizons, you're not getting a lot of smooth pursuit type stimulation from your life, or you're just getting it within the confines of a little box on your phone, like your your smooth pursuit is over, you know, millimeters or what we, we, we always talk in terms of visual angle, but the amount of degrees of visual angle. But if you're just looking at smooth pursuit in this little tiny box on your phone or on your computer screen, and you're not looking at objects in your environment, like swooping birds and things like that, which I'm guessing many of you are not spending your time doing, well, these mechanisms for smooth pursuit will get worse over time. Your vision will get worse. And so while I prefer that people get out into the real world and experience smooth pursuit tracking of visual objects and maybe it's a good reason to go to a hockey game or to, you know and walk, try and keep your eye on the puck which i can never seem to do move so fast or i guess this is a good reason to watch live sports if that's your thing or watch a tennis match like a cat like a kitten watching the ball go back and forth whatever watching kids play it doesn't really matter the the idea is that you want to use the visual system regularly for what it was designed for and smooth pursuit is a great way to keep the visual and motion tracking systems of the brain and the eye and the extraocular muscles working in a really nice coordinate fashion. I would say five to 10 minutes, three times a week will be great. If you care about your vision, you can train your vision in this way. The other one is to train accommodation. There are a lot of videos out there. I want to be clear on the internet, some of which um, are from clinicians, some of which are not, some of which are from scientists, some of which are from other sources, talking about things you can do to make your vision better, to improve your vision. Most of those are geared toward improving the extraocular eye muscles. But I did consult with our chair of ophthalmology at Stanford School of Medicine, Jeff Goldberg, who's an MD and a PhD, a phenomenal scientist and a phenomenal clinician, and incidentally, a phenomenal chairman as well, about what sorts of things, tools are actually beneficial for pattern vision and sight. And he agreed that a smooth pursuit stimulus, that kind of training, as well as, or exercise, as well as near far. So spending a few minutes, you might even just do this for two minutes of looking at something up close, that's going to activate these accommodation mechanisms and then moving it at arm's length and focusing on it for 5, 10 seconds, maybe more, maybe uh, 15 or 20 seconds, then slowly moving it into a location and then out. This is actually a lot like the visual training that's done post concussion to try and repair, actually repair some of the balance and motor and visual and cognitive aspects of the brain. Spend two to three minutes doing smooth pursuit. You could do this with a pen if you wanted. <laughs> you could do this. Uh, someone else could hold a wand and you could do that. Uh, if you've got someone that can do that for you. Practice accommodation for a few minutes, maybe every other day. Just bring something in close. You'll feel the strain of your eyes doing that. I can feel it right now. Move it out. You'll feel a relaxation point. Move it past that relaxation point where you will have to do what's called a virgin side movement to maintain focus on that location as it moves out. Bring it back in. At the point where you actually have to go cross-eyed, this will differ for different people depending on how far apart your eyes are, so-called interpupillary distance. So for me, I have been teased before. I have a very short interpupillary distance. I'm not a cyclops, but I'm heading there. Some people are more wall-eyed, like a flounder. Well, depending on your interpupillary distance, the point at which things get blurry and cross-eyed will vary. 
But for me, you know, as I get about, oh my gosh, I guess it's about six inches from my nose, it's really hard. I can't accommodate any longer. I move it out another inch and everything's in nice focus. Try and see whether or not you can get things closer. Now, you don't want to get cross-eyed. Remember what your parents told you? Or my parents told me that if you cross your eyes when you're young, that they can stay that way. Actually, they won't necessarily stay that way, but your brain can start losing information and the ability to see binocular depth, something we'll talk about in a moment. But for now, the protocol would be you know, two, two to three, maybe five minutes. Just practice that. Practice accommodation and then be sure to give your eyes some rest. Get outside, look at a horizon or do nothing. Just kind of let your eyes go soft. I guess what the yogis would call soft gaze. Just kind of relax your eyelids. Not this, not eyes closed. Just relax panoramic vision try and see the walls around you without moving your head exercise your eye muscles exercise the accommodation mechanisms of your eyes practice a little bit of smooth pursuit you don't have to be neurotic about this but you if you do this often enough meaning every other day every third day or so you can be the strange person on the plane or in the classroom doing this you know that people might chuckle or look at you funny or or tease you but that's okay because uh, you'll be able to see when they are um, losing their vision uh, so you'll get the last laugh um, please don't laugh at them but maybe you can help them at that point you can hold the pen for them um, it's worth doing it's really worth preserving your vision and again if you're a young person this is great because then you can actually build an extra strong visual system using all the tools that we're describing